So no truce in sight, fighting still raging, and the deadline of a truce for the holy month of Ramadan in tatters. A dire humanitarian crisis enfolding now in Gaza as famine begins to set in. The only glimmer of hope that a Spanish charity ship with food aid is preparing to sell from Cyprus as aid groups say only a fraction of the supplies needed to meet basic humanitarian needs is getting to those who need it. Well, we're going to cross then to Jerusalem. Talk to our reporter Andrew Hillier who joins us from there. Andy, let's talk about um, Gaza first of all. Still very little good news for Gaza. Indeed, Stuart, on the ground, the latest fighting mainly seems to be concentrated uh, around the uh, city of Khan Yunis. The IDF says its troops are battling Hamas militants uh, holed up in the uh, Hamad town residential complex. That's a, a complex of modern apartment buildings that was originally funded by Qatar and was meant to house displaced residents, uh, residents displaced from earlier uh, wars. Uh, in the meantime, Israel's war cabinet uh, meeting last night to discuss uh, those uh, those fading uh, chances of a truce. Um, and also in a rare message from Mossad, that's uh, Israel's external security agency, uh, the Mossad accusing Hamas of refusing to negotiate in good faith, saying it wanted to ignite the region. Hamas, for its part, uh, saying that Israel was refusing to budge uh, in its uh, demands. And now the big question is, uh, what is Israel's next move going to be? Of course, you'll remember uh, Benny Gantz, a member of Israel's war cabinet, a few weeks ago, uh, threatening to push into the southern city of Rafa if uh, a ceasefire deal didn't come together in time for Ramadan. Well, Ramadan has now officially begun. Uh, there is still no ceasefire deal. And in the meantime, more than a million Palestinians displaced uh, have found shelter in Rafa. So big fears about what could happen next. Meanwhile, Andrew, tensions as well are starting to mount where you are in Jerusalem as we held into uh, Ramadan. Yeah, that's right. A lot of anticipation here in Jerusalem about what could happen over the next few weeks, particularly uh, in Jerusalem's old city, which is only about 500 metres from where I'm standing. That's because uh, it's there where the focal point of tensions usually uh, takes place. Of course, uh, Jerusalem's old city, home to the holiest site in Judaism, the third holiest site in Islam, the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And even last night, video has already emerged of Israeli border police using heavy-handed tactics to push back worshippers trying to gain access to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound on the first night of Ramadan uh, prayers. Um, and in recent weeks, we have seen differences in the Israeli government with regards to the entrance policy uh, to apply on worshippers. Um, at one point, uh, Israel's uh, far-right security minister, uh, Itamar Ben-Gvir, even proposed uh, imposing uh, restrictions on Israeli Arab citizens. That's Arabs with Israeli uh, citizenship. Now, that was uh, met with outrage. Uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu eventually overruling uh, Ben Gvir. And there have been efforts to calm tensions. Uh, just last night, uh, Benny Gantz, uh, that member of Israel's uh, war cabinet, issued a video message addressed to Israel's Muslim citizens uh, in which uh, he insisted that the war in Gaza was not a war against Islam. And he also accused Hamas of using Ramadan to stir tensions across Israel.